Hello, my name is Daniel Fernandez. I'm the owner of scienceinhydroponics.com. And today we're going to be doing a video about the preparation of diluted solutions. So as you may know, there are a lot of products in the hydroponic industry that are concentrated solutions. So your nutrients, your concentrated foliars, a lot of things that are sold to you are concentrated solutions. So usually you know that you need to use a certain amount of the concentrated solution with a certain amount of water to reach the desired result. So you might want to take some amount of this and then put it into, let's say you want to prepare one gallon using a concentrated solution. So you'll take whatever the manufacturer says, put it into one gallon, and then you fill that container up to one gallon. But how do you do that? How do you ensure that the volume that you get is actually one gallon? For example, this is a one gallon container. So you might think, well, I just fill this up and it's one gallon. Well, actually, no. Actually, this is very inaccurate. Like to where do you fill it up? These containers have no lines and these containers have no way for you to tell whether you filled it up to one gallon or not. And the same thing goes for tanks. Like when you have a tank, some of them have volume markings. Those are completely useless. Like the accuracy of those volume markings is extremely poor, not only because the tanks uh, deform, but because they are simply not calibrated. Let's say the same thing for these things. For example, uh, this type of material, just because it says 20 here, it doesn't mean that those are 20 milliliters. This is not calibrated volumetric material. No, this is not calibrated volumetric material. And the tank that you use at your crop is not calibrated volumetric material. So how do you know that you're filling it up to a certain volume? Well, you do not know. And this is the reason why many of these solutions are often inaccurate. And by how much? They can be inaccurate by, by a lot. They can be inaccurate by 10, 15, 20%. That means you're preparing your nutrients inaccurately. So how can we do this so that we can prepare accurate solutions, accurate dilutions? Well, today I'm going to show you how you can use a standardized volumetric material, so calibrated like this, that I showed you in my last video, uh, to how to prepare a solution using one of these. So we're going to use one of these and to prepare a very, very accurate small scale solution. And then we're gonna measure the conductivity of that. And then we can use that as a bridge to prepare an accurate solution that is whatever volume we want. Since we, all, we are going to figure out the exact conductivity that we will get, then we will know regardless of whatever volume we want to make, what that conductivity should be adding a concentrated solution. So in today's example, this is a calcium nitrate solution that I prepared. And we are going to use this. The application rate of this is going to be eight milliliters per liter. So we're going to be preparing a very small scale, which is 250 milliliters. So we're going to be using two milliliters to fill this. And then we're going to measure conductivity using an EC60 conductimeter from a Apira, Apira, well, don't know how it's pronounced, uh, analytics, which is the my instrument of choice. I don't like mixed pH EC meters because I like all my probes to be separate because that's how chemists are. <laughs> so I'm going, uh, first of all, I, we're going to perch this because we want to make sure that there's nothing here. And that's always like a good first step. Always distilled water. Flask with distilled water is always a great thing to have. So I always purge uh, three times with distilled water, which is for good luck. You just swirl it and you just... I have a bucket there that you cannot see because it's not pretty. And um, we're just going to do this. So also whenever you prepare a concentrated solution or whether when, whenever you're handling concentrated solutions that are nitrates or that are anything that's not uh, very safe, make sure you use gloves. I like nitrile. Uh, most chemists like nitrile better. Uh, so this is what I, this one is the one, these are the ones that I always use and I recommend. Um, so use gloves. Now, how do we measure the volume? 
So the transfer, to transfer small volumes, you can use pipettes. That's like the standard lab thing. I generally don't use pipettes when I'm doing things uh, at home or for growers. I generally like to use syringes just because they're easier to get. And sometimes you're in a hurry and you need to get uh, accurate volumetric material and pipettes are just not available everywhere. But uh, the syringes, you can get them at any pharmacy. So they are often very cheap and very easy to have. So I'm going to show you how to accurately measure a small amount of volume using this. So this is, uh, first of all, as you normally do, let me put this closer to you, as we normally do. So we'll just put a little bit here and we're gonna just perch the syringe. Just take three small ones, draw the entire syringe so that you pour, perch the entire volume. And just take it up. So just purge the entire thing. Now that it's purged, we're gonna measure the volume that we want. So to do this, we want two milliliters. So I'm gonna draw slightly more than two milliliters. You can see here, I've drawn slightly more than uh, two milliliters. And now what we want to do is first of all, take out all the air because there's a lot of air there. So I just flick it and you can also shake it a little bit. Take out all the air so that it rises to the top. That gives you the most accuracy because you don't want to measure volume of air. You want volume of whatever concentrated thing you have. So a good tip, if you draw a little bit and you draw a little bit of air, then you can shake it a little bit so that all the air just goes to the top of the thing. Now, you face, make this face yourself and you put something on top so that any liquid that comes out is uh, accounted for. And then you just push it till the stopper reaches the mark that you want. So in this case, two milliliters. Two milliliters. So you know that's two milliliters. The error of these syringes, these plastic syringes, is usually around 5%. Um, so it's not a big error here. It is lower as you go to the um, uh, larger. So when you go to the bigger amounts in the syringe, uh, to the larger measurements, the error goes, it becomes smaller. So now I will just pour this into the flask. So you just lower the stopper till everything is out and then you're done transferring the volume. Now we have the volume here and now we're going to fill this up the same way we did last time. So I'm going to just fill it. Pretty shaky today. And for the last bit of volume, I am going to be using uh, a syringe as well to get some distilled water. This syringe that I have that I use exclusively for this distilled water. So I'm just gonna Always the last bit of the of the volumetric flask is hard to accurately do. So you want to make sure you're adding the volume very slowly. And that's it. And now as last time, put this in. Give it a good shake. And you can see the finally prepared solution here. Okay, so now we've prepared an accurate dilution. 
and now we need to measure the conductivity of this. So I have this uh, conductimeter that has been previously calibrated. And now the first thing that I need to do is to purge the glass, always purge. So I'm purging with the diluted solution to ensure that I wash any crap that's inside the glass with the diluted solution. Um, and now I fill it to a comfortable point so that I can make the measurement accurately. Then I am going to take this out. And I'm going to just uh, spray it with a little bit of distilled water. So I spray the electrode with a little bit of distilled water and I'm gonna clean it. If you want, you can also wash it with a little bit of the, of the solution. So you just rinse it with some of the solution. I'm doing this off camera because the bucket is not in camera. So just rinse it with a little bit of the solution to ensure that the electrode gets washed with whatever solution you're gonna measure. And then I just turn it on and put it in there. And it has a smiley face. If you can see a smiley face there, it means that the measurement is stable. And in this case, it's uh, 986 microsiemens. So that's 0 0.89, 0 0.895 millisiemens per square centimeter, per centimeter, sorry. And then we can use per centimeter square. I don't remember the units. <laughs> um, so that's the conductivity measurement and we can now use that amount so that 984 85 we know that that's the conductivity measurement we should get when we prepare the solution with the accuracy that we want regardless of the volume because remember that conductivity is an uh, what is called an <clears throat> uh, intensive property it doesn't depend on the amount of volume that you have, the conductivity is always going to be the same. So if we prepare a gallon or whatever hell volume this thing is, we know that if we add it, if we add our concentrated solution till we get that conductivity that we just measured, 185 microsiemens, then we will be at more or less the concentration that we want, but it will be very accurate because we already know at a very accurate degree what exact uh, concentration we expect. Now I've turned this off and I'm, I'm gonna wash it with a little bit of distilled water. And I'm going to just store this in distilled water. Um, so that's it. I hope that today you've learned how we can accurately measure uh, dilution uh, of any a hydroponic product you want or any solution you just need to know the application rate that you need then you prepare a solution that is very accurate using volumetric flasks and accurate measuring material which can be either calibrated pipettes or calibrated syringes these are pretty good because you know that people's lives depend on these things being accurate so you know they're not gonna like screw it up <laughs> and um and that's it. You determine this accurately. You measure the conductivity. And now you know exactly what the conductivity of any container should be. Either something like this or something like um, a huge tank. Now, one thing that is important is that if you're going to use a water source that is not distilled water, prepare the dilution with whatever water source you're going to be using. So if you're going to be using tap water, then make this dilution with tap water because we need to account for that within the conductivity measurement. Um, that's it. Thank you very much. Please remember to like and sus uh, subscribe and suggest topics. This is a new thing for me. So I hope you're enjoying the videos. I'm striving to make the best content I can for you guys. So I really appreciate your support, guys. See you on the next video.